Hi and welcome. I like to be educated, but I'm so frustrated. Hello to my loneliness. I guess that in the real suspense. So my day usually starts at 10 or 11 a.m. and it takes for me about 30 minutes to go to the office. At the moment, I'm working on a paper and also doing some research about gravitational lensing and cosmology. And for those who don't know much about gravitational lensing and cosmology, here is a quick introduction. Gravitational lensing was first introduced by Einstein in 1915. According to Einstein, the gravity of a massive object can distort and warp the fabric of space and time. Now for the light path, instead of traveling a straight line, the light will get bent around the massive object. For example, a massive galaxy. So this massive object acts like a lens. A big ass lens. Gravitational lens. So essentially, we can see an object even though it is behind another object. Here are a few examples of lensing images. This ring that you can see here is called the Einstein ring. In this case, it's a background galaxy, which has been lensed and distorted into a ring. It happens when the lens, the source, and the observer are perfectly aligned. In case they are not perfectly aligned, we will see long arcs like this. But now, what does gravitational lensing have to do with cosmology and the evolution of the universe? To work with gravitational lensing, we have to work with distances in space. With calculations, we can show that distances in space are related to the amount of dark matter in space, the amount of visible matter, dark energy, and the curvature of space itself. Now by studying galaxies with the lensing effect, we do not only obtain information about that galaxy, but also about what the universe is composed of. Are you ready? When your legs turn work like they used to before And I can't sweep you off of your feet I am currently at my office. 
Actually, it's not my office. It's like a common space, but there's nobody here. So it's kind of my office. Most of the time, I prefer home office, but sometimes I'm in this office, but sometimes I'm in the library working on my paper. For the paper, I have a supervisor who helps me a lot and I meet up with him like once a week or maybe twice. But for example, from other observables, you know that the universe should be something very close to a flat universe. Mm -hmm. And we can argue that, okay, we are analyzing just these models, but the, the model with many more three parameters, it's not very informative. So we should keep that out. Yes, I mean, we can definitely mention that we also run this model with other three parameters, but the error bars are of the order of, I don't know, 50%. See you. See you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. So every Wednesday and Friday, there is usually an open B boy practice session. I used to dance a lot in high school, but now I'm kind of busy, so... But today we are going! See you later! We are at a Vietnamese restaurant and I have some dumplings and some, some salad, some pho. And I'm just out here alone, eating by myself. No friends, no host. But I love going out, like going out alone, just me and my ass. Uh, my, I mean, myself. <clears throat> Cheers! Oftentimes at home, I still have to write on the paper because I didn't get everything done during the day and after that, it's bedtime. And that's it. That's my life as a MPA intern. I hope you like the video. I hope you enjoy. Leave a comment down below and see you next time. <laughs>